The investment in the Burbies Bridge forms part of a giant investment portfolio the scheme has, but a portfolio from which it is getting little returns. CRAM said the NIS was in talks with the bridge company to get the outstanding payment. Its investment portfolio has not been earning the rates of returns on some of its bonds and shares in in keeping with global returns. We will need to consider purchasing more attractive bonds and shares which are traded on the global stock markets such as New York, London, Japan, Hong Kong. John Seram, the chairman of the NIS, was speaking at an event the scheme held on Wednesday. He said that at the end of 2018, the NIS had an asset portfolio of $34 billion, 87% or 29 billion of which represented its investments. He said the income returned on investments in 2017 was 3.7% and it declined in 2018 to 3.2%. This entire portfolio needs to be readdressed with a view to obtaining more lucrative returns. He said the board has approved the hiring of a consultant in the coming months to deal with these matters. The NIS, he said, is looking to invest its money where it can get a lucrative return in the interest of keeping the scheme going, since its net profit has been on the decline. With prompt and highly accurate financial information available, Both the board of directors and the executive management have been assessing where NIS's financial viability is from its 30th of June 2019 financial statements. The NIS is currently celebrating its 50th anniversary. CRAM said maintaining financial sustainability is now a priority issue. Having identified two major income areas, there is the possibility that the deficit can gradually be reduced, eventually be eliminated, and NIS showing positive net come in the very near future. The NIS chairman pointed out that the scheme is re-looking at its income portfolio with a view to collecting its arrears contributions, some of which are long outstanding from employees, employers and the self-employed. Those who owe the NIS include the government through various public entities. During 2018, a debt management department was established and is now fully staffed. Reporting for the newsroom, Neil Marks.